Hello and welcome to Simply Fit Radio. I'm your host, Sandy White. And as usual, I am super duper excited about what we're going to talk about today. But I need to make a couple of announcements. And the first one is to thank WYTV7 for allowing Simply Fit Radio to be a part of their Christian Broadcasting Network. Please remember that we are a nonprofit organization, and if you want to continue to receive fitness tips and strategy segments from Simply Fit Radio, please click the donate button and make a generous donation today. Simply Fit Radio motto and mission statement is simply to provide tips and strategies to individuals so that they can become fit in their mind, body, and soul, thus allowing each of us the opportunity to share our gifts with the world rather than having them aborted by Satan. Please remember that fitness is more than just exercise. We have an outstanding guest today, and I'm so excited <laughs> for you guys to get the information. And I want to introduce Carla Carlisle, who is an accomplished author, and we will be discussing her book today, Journey to the Sun. She's also a speaker and child and mental health advocate, and she started her activism as a result of her eight-year battle to save her own son from future trauma. So welcome to the show, Carla! Thank you. you! I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So let's kick this off. Can you just tell our listening audience what inspired you to write Journey to the Sun? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you that I went on this long eight-year journey, and it, it was not really a, a conscious decision that I made. I ended up writing the book simply to share my story, which was one, my journey to motherhood. And then also my recognition and understanding about trauma and the impact trauma has on an individual. Uh, and then as it expands beyond that individual, looking at the family. And I learned a lot about generational trauma. I learned so much and I made so many mistakes. And quite candidly, it was therapeutic for me to, to author the book and publish the book and immediately it, it catapulted me into this advocacy work, which has really become my calling. It was probably always my calling, but I just didn't know it. And so I wanted people to know that they, they're not alone in their journey, in their mental health journey. Um, whatever, you know, the specific situation may be, it was first therapeutic for me, then I felt like sharing with others. And then I quickly learned, which I kind of knew in the back of my head, there was so much more work to be done. And sharing my story could really help move the dial forward in, in, in terms of stomping out the stigma of mental health and educating people around what we need to do to take care of our, as you mentioned, our minds, our body and our soul, all are connected. Yes, that is so important. And the, the sad thing is with uh, mental challenges, a lot of folks, as you mentioned before, it is a stigma and they don't yes. feel comfortable sharing. And therefore, since they won't share, they don't realize the assistance that's right. out there and they don't that's realize right. the communities, especially like the one that you've created, which is so awesome. So let me ask you this. D does your son know that you created this book? And if so, how does he <laughs> feel about it? Yes. Yeah, so my son, uh, I met him when he was 10 days old. He was my foster son. And I had him for the first six months of his life. And then he was returned to his birth mother. I'll give you the details in between. But in the interim, I'll just say he's now nine years old and I have adopted him. And we don't have any co contact with the birth parents. He does know about the book. He not only knows about the book, he wants me to use his real name in the book, and he wants his name on the cover of the book. <laughs> and what I told him was that when you get old enough to share your perspective on our story, then you can write a book too, darling. And I will support that 100% because his perspective will 
quite candidly and obviously be very different from mine. I mean, his story started at 10 days old. I was a grown woman. So very different angles. Yes, yes. And you know, having a perspective from his angle would be so helpful for yeah. uh, individuals that are in his age group. Because what a lot of people don't realize that if Satan can't get you as the adult, the That's parent, right. they go, he goes to the next generation. If we don't arm them with the armor that they need so they can fight right. this, then, then they get wiped out and the generations that follow them get wiped out. But if he knows what he needs to do right now, he yeah. can assist the other individuals with the power that's within them to to fortify and just kill this depression demon that's going throughout the the, the earth that's which right. is you know a lot of people as you mentioned before they they use it as a stigma but it's not a stigma it's something that you if mm -hmm. you are made aware of you can pray for you can work towards you know just demolishing it let me yes. ask you do you have any regrets for moving forward with with your journey and just coming out letting folks know that you are an advocate for mental health and and uh and allowing your son to start giving you inputs into this area of your life i have zero regret i almost wish that i had spoken up sooner but i think everything happens in god's time I will share with you that uh, when I started this journey, it was literally the journey to become a mom. And my husband and I experienced infertility challenges. We ended up divorcing after going through um, in vitro fertilization. We um, ended up, like I said, divorcing. And at that point for me, there was still this great need, desire to become a mother. And basically, I had a friend who had adopted her sister's children, and she encouraged me to foster. And I, I didn't ever feel that I needed to be pregnant to be a mom. And with all the children out there that needed love, it was such an easy move for me to become a foster parent. What happened in our situation was that my son was the 11th child of the birth mom and she had lost her parental rights to the other 10. By the time that I got him, she had experienced extensive trauma as a child that went uh, without an advocate or without the support that she deserved. And so she ended up unintentionally, of course, living her life in survival mode. She ended up perpetuating that trauma and that trauma that can be passed on from one generation to the next, as did the father. And so for me, it was really eye-opening and quite humbling and life-changing to see someone up close and personal who had to experience a childhood in protection mode, in survival mode, especially from those who are supposed to be there to protect us. Right. And so what I did was I said, I made it my business to try to help his birth parents. And so I decided when he was given back to his birth mom to let my foster license go and try to co-parent with her. I think I, it took me less than a week or maybe two weeks max before I contacted her because I was so concerned about his safety. And I'll tell you, I spent the next six tumultuous years trying to fix things. And you know, as well as I know, that I don't have the control to fix those things, right? Yeah. So I was kind of knocking my head up against the wall for a long time with great intentions, but ultimately it took an incident with his mother when he was, by this time now, fast forward, he's about five years old. So we had been trying to co-parent from six months to age five. And he went back and forth. I got him into preschool and, you know, was trying to do everything that I could to give him a very solid foundation. I did not know what it was like to live or to experience life without a solid foundation. And I started learning that through my experience with his birth mom. So in December of 2015, 
I had an experience with his birth mother and my son, but we were driving in the car. I was driving and his birth mother hit me in the face. We were having a disagreement and she struck me across the face. And I had never experienced anything like that. No kind of domestic violence, no kind of violence, of, you know, as a kid, you know, but that's it you know, kids getting into fights on the playground. This was on a totally different level. And here's our five-year-old in the back seat. And I have to say that that was the turning point for me. I literally pulled over in a parking lot. And I write about this in my book, Journey to the Sun. I pulled over in a parking lot and I got out of the car as fast as I can and as fast as I could. And I just hit my knees and I just said, I give up. Like, I have to give this to God because everything that I'm doing with the best of intentions, at the end of the day, I was enabling his parents to become more sick because they were leaning on drugs and they had a lot of domestic violence in their lives and they were leaning on these things that mask pain. And so I learned a lot inadvertently about trauma and the impacts of trauma. But in that moment, I realized that things had to change and I wasn't helping at all. I mean, I had purchased a house for them. I put them in a house. I was purchasing groceries. I had pest control because they were at one point living in a place that had so many mice that a snake showed up. I mean, it was, it, it tormented me. I couldn't sleep at night when he was with them because here's this little innocent child let alone thinking about the adults living in this type of environment. Uh, here's this innocent child being exposed to so many things and I couldn't fix it. And I'm a fixer. I tell you, I can fix some things. So I, at least I thought I could, right? So I really wasn't fixing anything. And that day was the beginning of the end of that control over me when I thought I was controlling some situation and defining this path. And that's when I turned it over to God and I had to be willing to let my son go into the system if he had to, to get him into a situation that was safe. And I had to let God lead me. And once I allowed myself to release that ownership and to give it to God, things started happening pretty quickly. That is so awesome. And what I heard in there is that basically you, 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 you sought out the knowledge of Christ to yes. allow you to humble yes. yourself so that he can yes. through, which allows yes. you to exhibit agape love, which is awesome. Purchasing a yes. house, and, uh, that, that's, if that's not agape love, I don't know <laughs> what is for somebody I, that you don't know. I would liken it to the story in the Bible of the two women who claimed that they were the mother of the child. Oh, yes, yes. And do you cut the baby in half? I had to say, if I must, I will let him go because the mother had the right, if social services got involved, to say, I don't want him with her and her would be me. And, and social services would have to follow her direction. Yes. He could go to another foster home or to another home, but he couldn't be with me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be willing to lose him to be a part of where we are today. Amen. So what, what do you want people to learn and take away from your journey? Because it's an awesome one. And a lot of people, which quietly spoken, if you look at statistics, there are more people going through what you're you have yes. gone through what you've experienced, but they're not reporting it. And, and that's right. And even today, regardless of how much information we have, people will mm -hmm. allow embarrassment to take over and instead that's of right. stepping up and say, embarrassment is a choice. I need some help. So just for some individuals that may be in our listening and viewing audience, mm -hmm. what are some takeaways that they can learn from your journey? So what one important point to share is that my son started exhibiting very aggressive behavior and 
I learned later that these, these were um, aspects of post-traumatic stress disorder. But at the time, he was still in this toxic stress uh, environment. And it got to the point when he was sick that he tried to die by suicide twice. Oh. And so I will just say to you with zero reservation that when it comes down to my baby and, and his life is at stake, I don't care about stigma or anything else. One in five of us have a mental health condition. I can tell you through this situation, I experienced my own situational depression and have been diagnosed with anxiety. And I have no shame about it whatsoever because here's the thing. What a mother will do or what a father will do or what a grandparent or whoever it is, a loved one will do for someone else, we oftentimes don't do for ourselves. Yeah, that is true. And so I was willing to sacrifice everything for my son but then I had to also remember what they say when you get on the airplane. You have to put on your mask first. Yeah. I couldn't take care of him if I didn't take care of myself. Yes. This and so, so what I had to do was start taking care of myself. Through this process, I lost a lot of friends. I alienated myself. I was ashamed at how bad things had gotten, but I knew that it was all in an effort to save my son. And then I had to come to that realization, as I mentioned, that I wasn't saving him at all. So giving it over to God and letting him guide my steps, I will tell you literally in three days, I gained emergency custody of my son. Amen. And it took three days with an attorney, you know, prayer with work. Like God led my steps. It's like, remember, Carla, you had this meeting with this estate planning attorney a couple of years ago, and she provided me names of family law attorneys, and I put it to the side. I said, I'll never be able to use this because there was no path for me to gain custody of him because I had no blood relationship with him. But right. in actuality, the law said otherwise. There's something called in locos parentis, and I was acting as if I was his biological parent. And I was taking care of him, and the court saw that he was in danger. Now, what do I want people to take away? Several things. Let me first and foremost say, I have nothing but love and compassion for his birth parents. Without them, he would not exist. And I am thankful for them. I pray for them. I have to put his safety and mine first so we do not have any contact. But the point is this, no child asks to be born in a situation where they have to live their lives in survival mode. And unfortunately, what happened to my son's birth mom was horrendous. And it happens all the time with children. And so with children, and then it, it's perpetuated with adults. And so what I would say is from her story and my story and my son's story, if you put us all together, what it comes down to is this. One loving advocate can make a difference in a child's life, in an adult's life. And if you don't have the skill set to do what needs to be done, recognize that and seek wise counsel. That can be your pastor, that can be a mental health professional. It depends on what the situation is. But at the end of the day, my son and I both went through extensive therapy and there's no shame in it. I still see my therapist and she helps me to stay grounded. It doesn't interfere with my faith because my faith is strong. And without my faith, I wouldn't be sitting here today because we were in grave danger and that is the truth and so I want people to understand that they are not alone and everybody's situation may be a little different but at the end of the day we all deserve help and support and there's no shame in asking for it Oh, I am so grateful for your support and your willingness and listening to God to create 
a, a venue for folks to come out that need assistance when they're having challenges like this. Unfortunately, we're getting to the end of our time. <laughs> yes. So we yes. bring you back on, but I just okay. want to let you know that we have had an outstanding time sharing with you today because this is a very important, important important topic to talk about. Um, one quick thing before we go, if you can yes. share with our viewing audience, since we didn't get a chance to go through um, some tips and strategies that they could possibly implement in their life, would you please tell them how they can get your book and how they can get sure. in contact with you after the show? Absolutely. So my book is called Journey to the Sun. It's S-O-N, like my child. And it's available on Amazon.com under Journey to the Sun by Carla A. Carlisle, and it's C-A-R-L-I-S-L-E. I have a website, which is CarlaACarlisle.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, all Carla A. Carlisle, uh, and you can find me that way. You can also, I'm sure, reach me through Simply Fit, through the broadcast uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'd be happy to pass my information along, and I really appreciate that. Yes, we would, because this is so, this is such a needed uh, area Absolutely. of support, and I hope you are um, thinking about expanding and maybe uh, connecting with some other areas throughout the United yes. States, and it's not just in the United States. We need this globally. Yes. So I'm decreeing and declaring in Jesus' name that you get more Amen. work than you can handle, because we need uh, it. <laughs> I, I, I I receive it. <laughs> I'll claim it. And, yeah. and I'll just share with this with you. And I know we have to go is that um, beyond therapy and with prayer, we do a lot ranging from meditation to um, just deep breathing. I just take some time in silence and just, and just give thanks because we're here and, and we're resilient. And I think that's something very important to remember that we as people are resilient and trauma should not be the norm. No, it shouldn't. So unfortunately we have to wrap it up. Okay. Hey, Carla, this has been outstanding. And one of the things um, you mentioned was meditation. I don't know if a lot of the viewing audience know, and this may be something that you know about or not. I, I just yeah. found out about the uh, Calm app. And it's basically, I'm yes. reading off your side, so I don't miss anything. It's supposed to help reduce stress and anxiety, help boost confidence. It's supposed to help um, with soothing music and step-by-step uh, -step meditation. So y'all yes. contact Carla, check out this app. And I'm Sandy White, your host of Simply Fit Radio. And thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you all next week. Are you stressed out from planning your next big event? Do you have a great vision in mind, but maybe just not enough time to execute it? Let T. Williams Consulting help you. We specialize in planning, coordinating, and executing various types of events. Our goal is to tailor our services to each client to make their dream event into a reality. Whether you're planning a wedding, a family reunion, birthday party, gender reveal, reception, or theme party, T. Williams Consulting can make it happen for you. Now serving the DMV area, we are currently accepting new clients. For more information, please visit our website at www.twillconsult.com. Again, that's www.twillconsult.com.